Welcome to Design Mart's online catalog and monument design tutorial, designed to help you learn the basics of this valuable monument sales tool. First, you'll use your username and password to log into your own personal workspace where your work is stored. Once you're into your workspace, click Designs at the top right corner for access to work you've saved previously. To create a new design, click Designs at the top right corner and click New Design. You'll notice that you have choices on the left side under Monuments tab. We have pre-built classics such as Ties That Bind, Precious Memories, and A Closer Walk. There are also blanks including contemporary shapes, markers including flat markers, bevels, slants, as well as blank hearts, teardrops, and traditional serpentine style monuments in single and double sizes, as well as wings and half serpentines and grave ledgers or covers. To start a new design, we will select a monument from Precious Memories and make some alterations. After clicking Precious Memories, you may scroll through the selection. After reaching the bottom, you'll see the Next button on the right. Clicking it will take you through more monuments in the Precious Memories series, and clicking the Previous button on the left will take you back to the previous screen. After clicking Previous, we'll select D922 for personalization. Using the Zoom tool is easy. Click and drag the slider to zoom in and out. You may explore many alternatives, including a new base underneath your monument. By scrolling down and clicking Bases on the left, you'll see some alternatives, including this wash top base, which we will fill with granite color by visiting the Base Characteristics area on the right. You may easily delete any options you don't want by locating the object on the right and clicking Delete. Let's increase the length of the base and add a base on each side of the monument. If you click Bases on the bottom of your screen, you'll see dimensions and characteristics of the base. The base may be easily resized by clicking and dragging the right side of the base to the right. Base sizes increase in increments of 2 inches, just like most popular price books and order forms. Now we'll drop down to the lower left and click Bases. Once we choose one that is appropriately sized for this monument, position it to the right of the monument, and we'll click and drag a box around the monument to select it. Once the monument and all of its carvings are selected, they may be dragged and centered on the base. Next, we'll add color to our drawing. To add color to the vases, we'll click Vases on the right and click Granite Colors and choose a color to apply. Next, click Bases on the right, then Granite Colors and choose a color for the base. And last, on the right, click Monuments, Granite Colors, and assign a color to the monument. To choose dimensions for your monument's thickness, click Monuments at the bottom left of your screen. We'll select a depth or thickness of 6 inches for this monument. Now we'll click Bases and choose a thickness or depth of 10 inches and a height or thickness of 8 inches tall. Our online monument designer features an automatic price calculator. Prices may be shown by clicking File Actions at the top left and clicking Show Pricing. You'll see the price appear below the Zoom tool. In this example, you can see how adding a polished margin to the base affects the price. Prices may be discounted or increased by percentages if you'd like. To hide the price, simply return to File Actions and uncheck the Show Pricing option. You'll find a couple of flower arrangements at the bottom of the vases category and they may be placed and resized by clicking and dragging the bottom right corner just like any other panel, flower, or emblem. To mirror or flip an object, find the object on the right and click flip horizontal to mirror left to right or flip vertical to mirror up and down. Let's click the Components section on the left side and scroll down to see the categories of artwork that are available to us. We'll scroll back up and click on Floral Components to choose some new flowers for this monument. We'll click and drag the new roses onto our canvas and then click and drag the new component into position on the monument.
Next, we'll delete the roses that were originally part of this D922 design. You'll click the Components tab on the right, locate the rows you wish to delete, and click Delete. Then we'll locate the other rows and delete it as well. Next, we'll add some inscription panels to make this a companion monument. We'll move our family name panel up just a bit. Then we'll visit the classic component section on the left where we'll use the search feature and type the keyword Bible to see our choices for Bible or book style panels. We'll locate an appropriately sized panel, drag it into the monument, and position it. To copy an object, find the object on the right, click Copy, and a copy of the component will appear at the top left of your screen. Click and drag the object into position. At the lower left of your canvas, you'll see that a grid is available to help you with positioning components and lettering but it's still a good idea to have a qualified CAD operator to double check the alignment of your work before cutting stencil. Next we'll add lettering to our monument. Near the top left of your screen, click the Add Text tab. Default text will appear at the top left of your canvas. Click and drag the text into position. Then you'll click the Edit Text tab near the top right of your screen. Highlight the default text and type your new text and then choose a size for your lettering. You'll also see options for adjusting the kerning or spacing between your lettering so names can be made to look more tightly or loosely spaced. After you've typed and sized the name, you'll want to recenter it in your panel. To add names and dates to the inscription panels, click the Add Text tab at the top left of your screen and click and drag the default text into position in the panel. Locate this new block of text on the right side of your screen and select the default text and begin typing to add new names and dates. Pressing Enter will begin a new line of text for the date of birth and pressing Enter after the date of birth will give you a new line for the date of death. You'll notice that you have choices for the color of lettering as well as the finish and style or font of lettering. You may also skew text or place it on an arc if you need to apply any of these special effects. You may also adjust the amount of space between the lines by working with the values in the line height field. You may easily copy a block of text by clicking the down arrow next to your text and clicking copy. The new text will appear at the top left of your canvas and you may click and drag it into position. At times you may find it necessary to add portraits, emblems, or other images to your monument drawing. To do this, click File Actions at the top left of your screen and then click Import Image. Click Browse to browse your computer for the image you'd like to place. Locate the image on your computer and click Open and then click Add. The image will appear at the top left of your canvas. Simply click and drag it into position and adjust the size by clicking and dragging the lower right corner of the image. After resizing, you may recenter the image between the panels. Last, you'll want to add a background to your monument design. On the left of your screen, click Backgrounds, select a background, and click and drag it onto your canvas. Next, use the Zoom tool to view your entire monument. Then position your cursor near the bottom right of your monument and click and drag a box around the entire monument and base. 
This selects everything and allows you to move everything as one group. If you make a mistake, you can always press Ctrl Z or use the undo button at the top of your screen just above your canvas. You may export your rendering in one of two ways. First, you may click Export As and choose Export PNG to create a color image or picture. This image may be opened in a variety of image preview programs, such as Windows Photo Viewer, as shown here. Our online designer is unique and that your drawing does not have to be recreated from scratch by a CAD operator. Simply click Export As and choose SVG, Postscript, or DXF to create a file for stencil cutting. This vector file may be opened in many CAD programs and should be double checked for accuracy by a qualified CAD operator before any stencil is cut. This eliminates long waits for CAD drawings and moves your order into production much faster than when a CAD operator must create a drawing from scratch based on a picture. In addition to saving images and CAD files to your computer, you may also email images and CAD files to yourself and others. Simply click Email As and choose the format you wish to email, whether it is a color picture or a CAD file. You will want to save your work, so you may edit it again or use your favorite designs again in the future. Enter a name for your design in the field at the top of your canvas. Then click File Actions and Save. You'll see a message that confirms your drawing has been saved and you may close the notice by clicking the X on the right side of your screen. By clicking Designs and Your Designs, you'll see that your drawing has been saved to your personal workspace. To log out, click your username at the top right of your screen and click Log Out. Thank you for watching our tutorial video and we hope it's been helpful. Please email or call if you have any questions and we'll be glad to help.